unemployment claims in Illinois for the last two days, more than 41 Thousand. There were more than 58,000 new jobless claims. 81,000 new jobless claims. More than 114,000 people filed for unemployment in Illinois. The CBS2 exclusive investigation. They are the state workers that process your jobless claims, and you've never heard from them until tonight. For the first time, they are taking us inside the backlog and what might be holding up your benefits. We can't show their faces, but what they have to say is much more important. They agreed to speak only with our Tara Molina. It's very disheartening. They're the voices on the other end of the phones that never stop ringing. But it seems insurmountable. The cases that just keep piling up. We can't get to every issue. Of the more than 1 million people in Illinois who've applied for unemployment benefits. It's now been two months without any income for me. Many lost their jobs overnight. Help isn't coming as quickly. I have a nine year old, so, and it, it's just us, and there's just been nothing. Right now, we're told there are 512 Illinois Department of Employment Security employees, like these three, working to process unemployment claims and answer phones. But our reporting has revealed one problem after another. People who need help with their applications and can't get through. I called 602 times. People tripped up by small errors they can't fix. I called all different numbers to the key bank. I'll wait on hold three to four, five hours. Others who are getting benefits they can't access. We had rent to pay, car note, you know, lights. A clearly overwhelmed system. Even still, when we asked the department, they told us there is no backlog in issuing benefits. But that's not what the insiders, the people doing the casework, are telling us. Speaking out is important to me. There's so many things I see wrong. They understand the reality of this situation, that not even IDES could prepare for it. No one's ever handled this before. They risked coming forward because they're passionate about helping people, but say it's help not everyone is getting right now. People aren't able to receive their benefits at this time still, two months later. They're talking about the backlog, the one IDES told us doesn't exist. So we asked IDES again. They said there is no mechanism to push through claims, but employees stand by it. You go in, you do this so much work every single day, and then there's just still thousands and thousands of, of cases that aren't done. Thousands and thousands of cases they say they aren't staffed to handle. We're understaffed. We can't keep uploading. Claimants can't. Governor J.B. Pritzker has addressed that issue publicly. With funding cuts over the past 10 years, IDES has 500 fewer employees now than during the Great Recession. But they're dealing with more claims. What hasn't been addressed publicly? How these IDES employees say they are told to make up for understaffing. They're looking at quantity over quality. Processing as many applications as possible. All they wanted us to do was literally push them through. Even applications with obvious errors. Because they say the process isn't simple. Small errors can mean a big delay in benefits. During a pandemic, an even bigger delay. So they say pushing applications through is only contributing to the number of people waiting for benefits. Not trying to fix them. Just push them through that way. We can deal with it later. Just push them through. How is that helping anyone? IDES says they've added a virtual call center and 242 call center reps to help. But we found Illinois still has hundreds fewer employees than some states with similar population sizes. But the challenges they face walking into work every day go beyond that. Do you feel safe at work? No, we don't. Just like so many of us, they're scared. We don't have masks on at our desks. We're using the same bathrooms. We're using the same copiers and printers and fax machines. They say they were never given the option to work from home and they don't feel protected. We're putting our safety and health at risk to help the people of Illinois. We took those concerns and all of the claims made by employees to IDES for a response, sending a detailed request just after noon Tuesday. 
We didn't hear back until late this afternoon. A spokesperson confirming three people who work in IDES offices have tested positive for COVID-19. Acknowledging they are allowing some employees to work from home, but others are still required to report to their offices. But for the unknown number of people in Illinois still waiting on unemployment benefits, the cases they're still working to get to, the phone calls they haven't answered yet. We're sitting here behind the desks all day and we do, we care, we are trying. These employees want you to know. Right now the main focus is getting people paid. They're doing everything they can to help you. Just knowing that people are waiting on you or not eating because of you or because of your agency. And I mean, it's unprecedented, I understand. However, it still doesn't take away that feeling in your stomach. We've requested interviews with the Department of Employment Security since this crisis hit. We've only ever received statements from their spokesperson. We have never heard from the department's acting director, Tom Chan. And now to a CBS2 investigation. Hundreds of millions of dollars lost, taken by scammers, robbing states' unemployment programs. And many states are vulnerable, including Illinois. CBS2 investigator Dorothy Tucker talked with two people who are certain they've been targeted, one who's still working. We appreciate your patience. The plea for patience on the recorded message High volume of traffic. from the Illinois Department of Employment Security is not well received by Reginald Fitzgerald, while working as quickly as possible. especially since it ends like this. And they hang up on me. I go through 19 prompts to get hung up on. Fitzgerald has been calling the agency for weeks, but not because he's trying to get unemployment. I'm still working. I didn't ever file for unemployment. And Fitzgerald is a victim of identity theft. Address change verification. He figured that out when he got this letter from IDES, basically asking him to confirm his new address. Well, I didn't initiate it. When he couldn't get through on the phone, Fitzgerald copied the letter and mailed it back with a not so subtle message. This is a fraud, four exclamation points. I was laid off from work on April 13th. Unlike Fitzgerald, Amanda Johnson wants unemployment, but she too is a fraud victim. In Johnson's case, not only did the thief file for benefits in her name, but they're collecting her money. They beat me by a week. I found out uh, the name of their bank, which I don't remember off the top of my head, um, was a bank that I've never even heard of. Welcome to the Illinois Department. Johnson got that news when she called IDES. How'd she get through? Luck. We appreciate your patience. She got frustrated and started randomly hitting numbers and suddenly got a real person. It was like, please hold for a representative. And I was like, oh my gosh. Happy to be connected, not so happy to learn a thief had changed her personal security questions, including her mother's maiden name. Which is why I couldn't verify my identity. Johnson and Fitzgerald are among the consumers now the target of unemployment identity theft, according to the ID Theft Resource Center in San Diego. With the influx of unemployment benefits from the federal government, now identity thieves see this as a big pot of money and they are trying to cash in on it. And Lee says the thieves already have the information, passwords, social security numbers, birth dates. Remember the target breach? It exposed the personal information of 41 million consumers, Equifax, 147 million, and last year, the Quest Diagnostics breach, 12 million. When we first introduced you to Letitia Jones, we hid her identity because she was uncomfortable going public with her story. I've never applied for unemployment. I've been working for the past six years. As we explained then, Jones was a victim of ID theft. Someone had used her personal information and applied for benefits in her name. Only the unemployment debit card came to her home. But to this day, she says she hasn't touched the money. I still have it. I haven't put up, I haven't activated, I haven't touched it, it's still in the envelope. Jones is now willing to show her face because she's angry. Last week, she got this letter from the Illinois Department of Employment Security saying that I owe unemployment $4,000. $4,336 to be exact. I was upset. The notice also says the amount owed must be repaid. I'm being blamed or being 
penalized for something that I didn't do. Jones filled out a fraud complaint the first time she was approved for unemployment benefits she didn't ask for. This time she called and got lucky. And I finally talked to someone and that they're going to take care of it. The agent directed Jones to fill out a police report saying she was the victim of ID theft, send it to the agency, and trust IDES to fix it. She doesn't. My concern is they're going to try to make me pay for pay this money back that I didn't take. She certainly has a right to be concerned. We reached out to employment attorney Karen Doran. She suggested Jones and others who have received benefits they didn't apply for not only send a police report, but keep sending emails to the IDES fraud department. And if it never gets fixed, um, then that means that IDES can go after you. According to the notice, the state can also deduct and withhold your state income, tax refunds, lottery winnings, and other monies. Since March, we watched unemployment numbers skyrocket in Illinois. Now more than 1.4 million without jobs. We told the stories of the people who lost their jobs overnight, but waited months for help. We've been waiting three, four months already. Some are still waiting. We're having to go to food pantries and stuff. There's one person we still haven't heard from. Acting director, Tom Chan. So we started asking questions, requesting public records that could shed light on his performance, including any complaints filed against him. We first filed a Freedom of Information Act request on May 28th. From there, our request was met with delay after delay after delay, even through July, when the records were due for the third time. We never got them. Then we heard from their attorney more than a month after our first request on July 8th, claiming we'd have the records in the next five days. He delayed again. Here's where it gets interesting. The very next day, Governor Pritzker announced Tom Chan's replacement. Still no records, no reason, raising questions about the agency's transparency. CBS 2 investigator Pam Zekman discovered a simple mistake could mean you can't collect your cash. During the process, I started to answer a question about when my start date was with the company I'm working for. And the computer flashed this response, saying her start date cannot be prior to her birth date. Implying that I had registered or done something incorrectly with my birthday. I tried to go back and fix it multiple times. And it won't let you go back to correct the birth date if a mistake has been made either by the computer or by you. It will not let you go back and fix it. She repeatedly tried to call IDES for help and got an answering machine with no answers. I want to talk to a person. If I'm not doing something right, help me understand what I can do. The exact same thing happened to Carol Salk. My birth date was wrong. I tried to go back a page. There's no way you can go back a page. I tried to cancel my application. It wouldn't cancel. She also tried calling IDES for help. You make phone calls and there's no one to talk to. The CBS2 investigators found other smaller states have now beefed up their staff of call takers. Georgia with three to 400, Michigan with 500, and Ohio with more than 1,600, compared to Illinois with 173. It's extremely frustrating and it's depressing too. Rachel Daub still has the receipt for the more than $4,000 that was garnished from her 2014 tax return after she was overpaid for a claim she filed back in 2011. But when this single mom of four lost her server job to COVID-19 and was certified to receive unemployment, she got a terrible surprise. I'm getting a 26 week penalty. Even though she paid the money back, she won't see a penny of that claim until she waits out the 26 weeks. That means absolutely no income being a single mother of four children. And how are you going to make ends meet? They're not going to meet. 
So we asked Governor Pritzker about California's solution to allow residents in this position to collect federal funds. But he said states like California are gambling on the premise that they'll be reimbursed. And he argues that Illinois is not in the position to do that. He says he was forced to take legal action because he couldn't get IDES to respond without it calling this lawsuit his way of standing up for all of the others dealing with some of these same issues. $6,400. That's what John White says IDES owes him in unemployment benefits, and he's taking them to small claims court for it, a move he calls a last resort. It's, it's sad that our last answer to recover this money is going to be through the court system. For John, the problem started months ago with what he calls a malfunction in the state's software, a glitch leading to two claims in his name, but only one he could receive benefits on for hundreds less than the amount owed. I try to call these guys. Nobody ever answers the phone. So he kept trying for weeks, never connecting with a person to address the problem, an issue we've exposed since the start of the pandemic. And when he finally got through to someone on the phone, he says they couldn't help him. They told him someone else would follow up. That never happened. One day after learning how to game the phone system, we have implemented the callback only model. As the state changed their phone system. Instead of endless ringing, you will receive a call when you are next in line. With they'll them. call you back. Roger was told nine minutes. Did they? Well, of course they didn't. So I'm like, okay. DeMarco Puckett was told one. And you know, four hours later, here I am. Some who have waited weeks, even months, for a call back from IDES say when the call comes, it drops, disconnected, gone. Tonight, an insider talks to CBS2 investigator Dorothy Tucker about why the calls drop and why you're not getting a call back. I had my phone glued to me. I had to keep it on my person at all times. Moika Long tried to carry her phone everywhere. Once or twice I forgot and almost went into a panic. I'm running back, looking at my phone, hoping that they didn't call, which they didn't. Long wasn't just waiting on any call. The call she did not want to miss would determine if she could pay her rent, car note, buy food. Very frustrating, uh, almost Almost scary. You'll be called back during that call from the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Loss of a job can be a stressful time. For Long is among the 1.7 million in Illinois who have filed for unemployment. When Long's benefits unexpectedly stopped in July, she started calling the agency to find out why. I called over and over again. Three weeks of calling. We're currently experiencing extremely high call volume. Never getting through. And then one day, a new message. We have implemented the callback only model. I'm like, great. I'm thinking like business. You know, you'll get a call back within 24 hours. But 24 hours was closer to another 24 days. When the phone finally rang. I was so excited. I'm like, yes. The agent asked a few questions, got some information, and then asked Long to hold on. I said, okay, they're going to come back with something. After holding for 21 minutes, the unbelievable, unimaginable, unthinkable. I heard a click and I looked down on my phone and it had gone back to the main screen. I was disconnected. I was almost in tears. I think the claimants deserve better. I know they do. This is an IDS insider choosing to remain unidentified. I worked under the callback queue system. The insider quit last month frustrated with how the agency operated the system and overwhelmed by the need. They're sad, they're crying, they need money. They don't know why it's taking so long for a call back. Too many calls is one answer, says the insider. When I left, there were at least 2,000 calls in the certification queue. Translation, 2,000 people with the same issue waiting for a call back. And that's just one of the reasons they call. For all other inquiries, Six. Another reason, lack of training for the agents. There were a lot of things that I didn't really know how to do. CBS2 investigators obtained a copy of the state's courtesy called back training manual. The document covers several topics, but the insider says that most of the training focused on how to open a claim. For other issues? I had to do my own research. Sometimes supervisors 
would be available for questions, but usually they weren't. That meant placing people on hold while the agent sought answers. And sometimes the unbelievable, unimaginable, unthinkable would happen. There was not a day where I didn't have at least one drop call, and usually three, usually three a day. And the insider wasn't alone. Sometimes it was system wide. Now, seven months after the state first shut down, we're still hearing horror stories every day from gig workers, independent contractors, and people owed federal unemployment benefits under the CARES Act who say they haven't seen a dime. But tonight, for the first time, the CBS2 investigators have uncovered exclusive information about exactly how bad the delays really are. CBS2 investigator Megan Hickey is live. Megan, a third of all claims, one out of three, have been rejected. Right, Brad Nerka, so far IDS has not been very transparent about how things were going. So we submitted a public records request that reveals exclusive insight into just how many people the state is helping and why some residents are being left high and dry. Oh, you're, 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 your claim is not approved. Jonathan Robinson didn't get fired from his leasing job in April, but he might as well have. Because after the schools shut down, he had to take over as primary caregiver for his two young children, and he couldn't work. It was denied, it was pending, it was denied, it was pending. According to IDES's own website, he qualified for PUA benefits, but apparently it's not that simple. Oh, we don't see the document, or PUA doesn't cover that, or you never apply for PUA. He took me through months of denials, appeals, and reconsiderations. At last check, he was told benefits were still pending. And every time I call or request a call back, you know, I'm running into issues and no one seems to know what's going on. So how many people are in Robinson's shoes? We wanted to know. So we requested 20 weeks worth of progress reports and painstakingly sifted through them all. And as of the most recent report last week of the nearly 400,000 PUA claimants, more than 142,000 jobless people didn't get paid. That's 36% or one out of three people getting nothing like Robinson. And records show that's pretty much par for the course since IDES contracted with Deloitte to build and run the system that launched in May. We also wanted to know why these people aren't getting paid. The records show that most cases fall into two categories, identity issues, which stonewalled more than 40,000 claims as of last week's report, and certification issues, which held up more than 85,000 claims during the same period. Husband and wife, Gary and Nancy, both dealing with fraudulent unemployment claims. Both dealing with the Illinois Department of Employment Security's callback only model. It would be, of course, nice to uh, have the option of waiting on hold for those that are able to do so. Stuck in the state's queue, waiting, glued to the phone. It took almost six weeks for Gary to get a call back. Five and a half weeks later, they, they called back. Nancy is still waiting. A lot can happen in five weeks. Like more fraud can happen. We've heard constant complaints since the callback only model first debuted in July from people who say it's failing. We wanted to know why. Several public records requests later, we broke that information down and now we have a clearer picture. The first day the callback model debuted, IDES call takers handled about one third of the number of calls they did the day before. And we found it took almost a month for the callback system to handle as many calls as call takers were before it debuted, with the average weekly handling time per call more than doubling. We learned there's an average time call agents are, quote, not ready. At one point in September, that was more than 20% of the time. And finally, we found that while call takers were added over the summer, those numbers dipped this month, with fewer call takers working in October than September. $6,184.22. CJ Farrar is in debt. $1,672.20. The bills are piling up. That's approximately 20000 total that I owe on the credit cards. And then medical bills are about 30000 at this point. He needs unemployment benefits to feed his family, but he can't seem to get them. It's a huge fight. Tens of thousands of unemployed Illinoisans are struggling just like Farrar. I'm broke. I have $3 to my name. I've broken down crying so many times, uh, just feeling helpless. Dozens of them telling CBS2 how they're suffering under the strain. I'm so sad, I'm very angry, and 
I need the money. Describing obstacles in their way, like an overwhelmed website. I went to go certify my first time, and I got an error message. A call center failing to keep up with demand. This money should be mine, but I can't even get through to somebody to find out where it is. In glitches leading to dropped calls when a claimant has been waiting weeks or months to hear from an Illinois Department of Employment Security representative to help them with their particular problem. I heard a click. And I looked down on my phone and I was disconnected. I was almost in tears. Over the past eight months, CBS2 has followed the rules and emailed IDES detailed questions. The reply, usually a promise to get back to us tomorrow, in a couple of days, or next week. Too often, we never hear back. So we try to get answers in other ways. Through a public records request, the CBS2 investigators received internal reports giving us a behind-the-scenes look at what's going on with the new Pandemic Unemployment Assistance website and the extra agents hired to handle the cascade of calls. $22 million systems implemented and managed by Deloitte. I understand that this is a new problem. Michelle Evermore, an expert with the National Employment Law Project, is critical. There are new people who have to be trained. Getting people up and running is difficult, but with this much money committed to the effort, it should be smoother. The reports raise other concerns. The week of November 13th, the weekly status report shows as many as 79,000 people didn't get paid because the system couldn't verify their identities. The call center operations report shows there are fewer agents working now than in the summer, but did that translate into longer wait times for claimants? Another question we'd like to get answered. This simple solution has led to fewer missed certifications. And this is the woman we'd like to hear from. She's acting IDS director, Kristen Richards. Last week was the first time she'd ever attended a news conference since taking over in August. She took the opportunity to boast about progress. We're happy to say that in many cases, claimants can hear from us, from us excuse me, within one to two weeks or less. But that's not what we're hearing from the claimants themselves. Five and a half weeks later, they, they called back. I've been waiting for a supervisor to call me to move my claim ahead since at least August. Unacceptable, according to Evermore. This far into the pandemic, people should be able to get a call back within a couple of days after all of the resources have been committed to uh, you know, call centers. At one point in CBS2's quest to get answers, I dropped in at an employment security advisory board meeting. Uh, good morning, everybody. Many top managers, including Richards, gave presentations. Their initials and voices, but no faces appeared on the Zoom. An insider tells us that there are technical glitches that are causing these unexpected drop calls. I'd like to know whether the agency is aware of this problem. Uh, if you are not, why not? If you are, what is, what is the agency doing about it? Again, no answers, but we know IDS is watching and listening. Look what they sent to their employees. CBS2 obtained this internal memo describing a negative news cycle and warning workers not to make comments to the media. Welcome to the Illinois Department of Employment Security. After six months waiting weeks for calls and speaking with six agents and specialists, Farrar finally gets the $16,000 IDES owed him, hardly enough to put a dent in his debt. As soon as you start trying to pay some bills and pay back some stuff, you're at nothing. Viewers like Farrar want relief in answers. My colleagues and I have been trying, asking more than a dozen times to sit down with Richards to discuss long wait times, filing issues, discontinued benefits, technical glitches. The list is long. We know she's given interviews to other media outlets, but so far, not to CBS2. So I called Richards and several other senior managers. This is the chief legal counsel for IDES. This is Isaac Burroughs, chief financial officer. To ask them your questions. Just concerning the length of time it, it is taking for some people to get their unemployment benefits. I eventually reached Richards, who picked up. We have been um, attempting to obviously get some answers from IDS for some time. She was polite. So while I have you on the phone, perhaps if you could just give me a response to just the, but still, no answers. Bye-bye. I was frustrated, 
but people like Laura Rice are exhausted. I am at the point where I've tapped into my 403B, I've tapped into other resources. I'm tapped out.